These great surgeons take care regarding the injuries of the brachial plexus tracts. Remember, the radial nerve is from the posterior cord from the middle trunk. Yes, it's responsible for all the extension, but take care. The metacarbophalangeal joint will only extend if the radial nerve is intact. While if the ner radial nerve had been injured during nerve injury, cord injury, or even a trunk injury, middle trunk injury, the patient will still can extend his proximal interphalangeal joint because it's a lumbrical muscle action. And the lumbricals, we have two medial and two lateral. The medial and the lateral, the medial with the under nerve and the lateral with the medial nerve. And those are way too far from the posterior cord and the middle trunk. Because the medial nerve is the upper trunk and lower trunk, which is the upper cord and lateral cord, the medial and the lateral cord. Why we all know that the medial cord is for the under nerve. So if the radial nerve got injured, you still can do extension of the proximal interphalangeal joint using the lumbricals, either by the medial nerve or the under nerve. So take care. Another trick you have to be aware of that you have to remember we have the flexio digitorum superficialis which is responsible for the flexion of the proximal interphalangeal joints. This is all by the median nerve. So the median nerve is formed by the, uh, the upper trunk and the lower trunk, both combination. So if you have injured to the upper or the lower trunk, you will have a roughly median nerve impairment. One of them will be enough to cause this impairment to the flexor digitorum superficialis function. And so take care that if you have upper trunk injury, you still can do full flexion with the full power of the distal phalanx of the little and the ring finger. The distal phalanx of the little and the ring finger because they are supplied by flexor digitorum profunda which is supplied by the ulnar nerve unless you have a lower trunk injury so take care the median nerve had a combination of the upper and lower the lateral and the medial cords while the under nerve is only for medial cord and lower trunk so take care the under nerve take the medial flexor digitorum profunda Take care. In practice, if you want to test for the flexor digitorum superficialis, you have to abolish the flexor digitorum profunda action. The flexor digitorum profunda is a mass action. The whole four fingers have to work as a whole together. So that's why you have to support and abolish the movement of the other three fingers that are supplied by the flexor digitorum profunda. So you can test for the flexor digitorum superficialis. Without abolishing the action of the flexor digitorum profunda, you can test for the flexor digitorum superficialis properly for each finger. So take care. These great surgeons take care. A very tricky question regarding the relation of the arteries to the brachial plexus. Take care. We have the trunks and the cords and the roots. And in every side, there is a side and another relation he will ask you what artery is closely related to the cord of the plexus plexus and you will state the subclavian artery as well as the axillary artery and here is the confusion isn't the axillary artery is a continuation of the subclavian artery this is a main question no it's not a main question it's all about your knowledge about the relation between the subclavian artery to the trunks and the axillary artery to the cords. There are two different things. They are not the same. Take care.